in a future slide, you're going to see that the 9% is already mitigated uh, due to this, this budget is in real time and changing, and there's been some changes made to it since this has been sent out, and those increases are no longer 9% in those years. So wait till we get to those slides and see if you want to still make an adjustment or not. Do you want to hold on that then until such time as we have a clear understanding? Okay, so let's carry forward, please. Changes in minor capital in the twi from 2013 are pump repair at Springwood facility, and then we look at um, in 2017 we've increased the AR AWS ERWS allocation by $578,000 to reflect the operate the estimated operating costs of the um, completed facilities. That's the intake and the water treatment plant. In the capital. Let me stop you right there, please, Ms. Lovegrove. Go ahead, Councillor Powell. Sorry, could you go back to the last screen? And and so you said that was $578,000. It's not $578? Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. If only. That would be great. All right. That would be a very highly automated facility. Yeah. Go ahead, Ms. Lovegrove. Okay, so the capital carry forwards were Springwood Generator, Forsyth Acacia to Finholm, Temple, Sanderson to Dolly, and Dolly to Bay, Corfield Street from Skylark to Jensen, and actually all the way down to Highway 19, and Banks Avenue and Dogwood, and the associated costs are showing there. And in the capital revenue side, we actually have some developers' contributions sitting in reserve fund that we can apply to the Springwood Water Facility, which we have in, taken into the revenue side of the model. So again, the, the service priorities for the water fund, basically we only have the three areas that the water fund um, at, falls into, but the, again, they are in your, in your package with the comparison between 2013 and 2014. Then we have, again, would be the first page of the blue, the blue tab in your binder, the uh, utility fund, the basically what the budget bylaw would represent based on the information at the time of, of printing it up. So again, providing you with uh, showing up a, a balanced budget for the next five years. Blue, the, blue, the blue tabs, the blue tabs, and it says water fund budget bylaw, the very first blue tab. So based on the information, um, we start off in 2014 with a accumulated surplus of 5.1 million and end up in 2018 with just under a million at this, based on the information in your binders. Very good. Any further questions on the water utility fund before we move to the um, sewer utility fund? All right, very good. Let's get into this crappy conversation. Thank you, Your Worship. So in the utility fund, the rate increases are 6% in 2014 and 5% in the remaining four years of the plan. The 2013 carry forwards, again, and the sewer master plan was carried forward in the amount of 132,000. The capital carry forwards were Corfield, Stanford to 19A, Banks Avenue, and Dogwood. Just let, let me stop you right there for a question. So I'm seeing in here that we still are very much in our anticipated time frame around the work uh, anticipated in Corfield next year. Uh, obviously the sewer components of those upgrades, so that's still very much moving forward as anticipated time frame wise. Yes, yes, excellent. Okay, very good, very good, carry on. Well, I know we don't we don't have our engineer here, so that, in fairness, would have been a question more directed for him. And the service priorities for the sewer fund, again, there's only the two categories that the costs of the sewer fund fall into, but we have the comparison between last year and this year's budget. Then the bu budget bylaw for the sewer utility fund, which is the first orange tab in your binder. 
again showing the, the, to, the total um, budget amounts for the full five-year plan for the balanced budget. And based on that information, the accumulated surplus starts out at 2.1 million and ends up at about 945,000, just short of a million in 2018. One thing I would like to mention to Council is that in your packages, there are spending packages. Those spending packages amounts I have not talked about in the presentation. You have the list of them in your uh, binders. They are all included in this, in this model. So they, we have taken into consideration all the costs of those spending packages, which are additional um, services. All right, very good. Uh, Council Lefebvre. Thank you, Richard. We talk about at the RDN board, we talk about the upgrade of the, of the sewer the sewer plant over here in French Creek. And uh, what's what's the implication? Is this covered in that, our contribution? Which is, because that's going to be a lot of money. So are we, I need, I'm a worry wart. I need some comforting words because it's going to be big bucks, millions and millions and millions of dollars. Mr. Manson, if you could help Councillor LaFave sleep better at night. Everything that we have been made aware of from the regional district has been included. If they haven't told us, then we haven't included it. All right, very good. Carry on, please, Ms. Lovegrove. Thank you. So some general fund additional revisions. Now these are revisions that we have made since we published all your binders. So your binders do not reflect these. The information I have given you previously does not reflect these. So this is a new, this is a new updated version. So the changes are property assessment. We, the, we had reduced growth estimates in 2014. So our, we estimated a little bit higher in the growth. So this is resulting in property taxes reduction of approximately $75,000 this year. And of course that accumulates for, for the five years. And then also another um, addition revision that we had is in the RCMP contract, we had an additional officer starting in 2015. We have delayed that until 2017. So that uh, gives us a little bit more money in the next couple of years. And brings out in 2017. So okay, I see a hand over here. Councillor Carrie Paul Davidson. Thank you, Worship. Is that a typo, Pam? Is it should it say officer or are we planning on putting in another RCMP detachment no. somewhere in Parksville? Yeah, I apologize. That should say officer. Thank you. Yeah, that is supposed to be officer. Go ahead, Councillor Faith. Thank you. I sent everyone an email, I believe yesterday or the day before with regards to the 911 service that's being provided in the north and with the headquarters for fire fire notice and for a police police notice and there's an indication in there that they might be looking for more money uh, did you i don't i know if I, I think i sent it to i know i sent it to the uh, cao but is that sort of contemplated in here because it looks like they're looking for the rcmp are looking for more money possibly this year next year if not this year mr manson um, if i may your worship 911 is a regional service um, if it affected us, it would affect us through the RDM budget as opposed to our own. Please carry forward. Thank you, Thank you Your Worship. There were some other very minor um, adjustments, and based on those adjustments, the accumulated surplus fund now shows 4.9 for this current year with a 1.002 in year 2018, which is up slightly from the previous amounts that you were showing. So we have um, got done a little bit better on the, on the amounts that we've changed. So in the water fund, we've also had some revisions. Basically, we found a formula, um, thing, a formula error, so we, we adjusted that. And based on that formula error, we have reduced the proposed water rate increase in 27 and 18 to 5% each year. So you see how fast staff can accommodate your concerns? That's pretty amazing. Okay, very good. Carry forward, please. So based oh, I see Councillor Morris. Uh, thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, does that still uh, assume a 2% in 2016 then? All the other rates are unchanged. 
So based on that reduction, even to the 5 percent, with the correction of the formula error, our actual surplus is at just over a million dollars in the year 2018. And that basically concludes my presentation. So I'm open now to counsel and the public's comments and questions. Okay. So before we carry forward, I do know we have one member here in the gallery. Sir, did you have any questions? Okay. So we don't require a resolution to open the floor to members of the gallery, and we'll go back to the counsel table then. And I see Counselor Lefebvre. I know we didn't talk about it too much, but the operational budget, did you have a screen on that, on the operating budget? Because I'm thinking that April 1st we got a, what, a 9 percent increase in hydro? And is that included, that's concluded in the budget? And are we looking at, based on that, are we looking? Just for the record, because folks at home may not be able to see nods, it is included in the budget, increases anticipated as a result of changes with hydro rates. So my follow-up question in that regard is that are we looking at ways and means to reduce our energy consumption? And I'm thinking about, obviously, solar. I'm also thinking of LED, but I'm also thinking about there are new systems on the market now where the lights are turned off and on by movement, which, and as long as that doesn't interfere with the safety and security, but at least it could cut back on having lights burning all the way down the road, maybe every second light. So I'm just wondering if we're looking at that sort of thing. So beyond the council direction that was given to look at the potential of generating our own power in light of increased rates, can you give us a quick update, Mr. Metcalf, on the efforts underway to help reduce power consumption? Yes, Your Worship. One of the items as a spending package in this year's budget that's included right now is an energy audit. So that spending package is a $14,000 spending package, and the purpose is to undertake an energy audit exactly for those purposes. So we'll review our current practices. We'll review, as part of that audit, we'll review opportunities for savings. We'll be reviewing opportunities for energy sources. So it covers off a number of those. Also included, it includes both facilities as well as our street lights and things of that nature. It will also include incentive programs that are available through BC Hydro or other senior governments, too. So from that, we hope to develop a better capital plan or a better plan in terms of it will include implementation plan and costs for those implementations moving forward. All right. Thank you. Other questions from members of council? Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Neufeld, and then I'll see Councillor Greer. Thanks very much, Your Worship. I guess when I came into this meeting, into this room, I had expected to talk about this year's budget. We're, you know, four months into the budget, and what we've really been talking about is what's going to happen over the next four to five years. And I'm sort of lost. I thought we were going to have a line-by-line discussion about what is in the budget and what, in fact, is there and whether we as a council agree with it or not, whether, in fact, we could actually make some changes to it. And so I've spent a great deal of time looking through the discussion, and I have the impression that what we're being asked to do as a council is just approve the budget as it's presented. And I think I take issue with some of the things that are going forward. And I have a great number of questions. I don't know how the rest of council feels about it and what work that they have done. And I'm sorry to direct it to you, Ms. Lovegrove, but you're the presenter at this point. I was hoping to have a discussion about this year's budget. All right, Councillor Neufeld, in that case, since this is an open floor, is there a concern with respect to the first year of our five-year financial plan? Because that is how we budget over a five-year plan. Is there something you wish to raise in front of council right now? I 
Actually, there are a whole slew of things as far as costs are concerned, and Ms. Lovegrove has addressed a couple of them as far as the officer being put out to 2017, and I appreciate that. I'm glad that the fire chief is here. I would like to have him explain the issue. We've heard about this a couple of times, the issue of a new truck at $500,000, and I'm just trying to save the city some money and the counselor, at least the taxpayer, some money, and looking at what we could do with respect to used trucks, with respect to thinking about what a $502,000 cost is over a 20-year period. By the time you look at it, $502,000 over a 20-year period is worth anywhere from $1 to $2 million, which, in fact, is being depreciated down to, I think you've said that our trucks are virtually worth $50,000 at the end of it. So I was just thinking, can we not get a better value out of trucks? And so I'm looking at the concern for purchasing used trucks. I'm looking at the concern for utilizing our manpower that we do have to upgrade some of the trucks that we have. And you say that there are things that can be done or that can't be done. And so I'm just trying to get a handle on what it's costing, and I don't mean to pick on you, Chief, because there are other illustrations that I would use as well in looking at it on a line-by-line basis. So if you'd like to address it, or if you want me to speak to a couple of other things. Well, why don't we start there, but just for future reference, do try to address the Chair, and then I will go to the various members of staff. But you did hear the question, Chief, with respect to capital in regard to fire equipment. Did you wish to touch on that? Yes, Your Worship. We have our trucks scheduled for a 20-year replacement program. After 20 years, the vehicles lose their certification, if you will. We can get them recertified every year. And the truck that is in the budget is just about to finish being built right now. It is replacing a truck that is 24 years old. So we have gone past the 20-year replacement program, and that's recognized by the Fire Underwriter Survey, which is what a lot of the insurance rates are based on as far as coverage and that. So it affects everybody's insurance rates and that sort of thing. And technology changes quite a bit over the years. So that has a big impact on the truck as well. All right. Thank you. I heard within Counselor Newfield's questions about maybe going to purchase a used piece of apparatus. I presume you've probably looked at the cost-effectiveness of doing that. Is that something you could elaborate on? Yes, Your Worship. We have in the past purchased used apparatus. Our ladder truck that we currently have is an example of that. But having said that, the lifespan of buying a used truck, when you figure out over how much a year it's going to cost, there's not a real big difference. For example, we purchased our aerial truck about 10 years ago. And so it's due for replacement. The replacement cycle comes up quicker on a piece like that. So over the length of 20 years, I think it will work out about the same. Okay. So did you want to move to your next question, Counselor Newfield? Thank you very much, Your Worship. I'm sorry I did not direct it to you. The next question, if we look at the PCCC, as far as the $250,000 subsidy, it's something that I think we should be looking at as far as a cost subsidy is concerned and what we would be using, how we could be possibly using that organization 
to, to uh, be more effective as far as uh, uh, a quarter of a million dollars being uh, uh, provided to uh, that organization. I, 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 just, I look at it and I say, um, I guess in comparison with other organizations that I've seen, and, and I, I hate to use uh, Qualicum, but uh, I do, um, their, their uh, facility seems to be extremely well used and, and ours doesn't seem to be as well used as, as it could have been or could be. Uh, so I, I look at uh, costs and I look at um, the value that we receive from it. Uh, it's a nice piece of property. It's a lovely stage. Um, it was well used as far as the uh, wellness fair. But um, you know, are, are we getting value out of it as a city for um, uh, that, that particular uh, uh, facility? And I, 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 I think that that's a question that I, I have to ask and, and uh, it should be addressed. Uh, one second, Councillor Greer. So um, that's not a question. Some of that question is subjective, right? Um, are we getting value out of it is a difficult question for a council to ask uh, on the fly. If indeed you have a concern with respect to the ongoing subsidy of that facility or if indeed you're looking for a different approach toward the operations of that facility, then I would suggest to you what you would probably want to do is bring forward a recommendation either now or in the subsequent uh, budget meeting uh, asking uh, for council support to reevaluate our structure uh, with regard to the Parksville Conference and Community Center. Uh, it would only be through that kind of um, an analysis that we could properly answer some of the questions that you just put forward. Should I make a, a, a Your Honor, Your Worship, can I, should I make a motion at this time then? And there's nothing preventing you from making, it would be a recommendation as committee as a whole, but you could make that recommendation or it could go to Councillor Greer, you could think on it for a moment and then make the recommendation, but I'll give you the opportunity for sure. Thank you. Councillor Greer. Thank you, Your Worship. I've had this concern, of course, for the last several years, and at, at times, a couple of different budgets ago, I suggested that maybe we should privatize this building or sell it because we're losing revenue on it each year. It gets, it gets to be a greater subsidy. And I know of many, many uh, people and groups who have been using it in the past who are no longer using it. And uh, I assume it's because the price has gone up. There's a lot of... Uh, the, the groups now going out to Coombs, they have facilities out there. And I can see our facility here being used less and less each year, which makes our subsidy more and more. So I would think there should be a discussion on on something serious to be looked at with the PCC building. All right, well, it sounds like we would likely have a mover and a seconder, so I will go back to Councillor Neufeld if you wish to make a recommendation. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, what I would move then is that um, uh, the council take into consideration uh, how we can uh, make the uh, Parksville Conference and, and uh, Civic Center uh, a more effective um, organization and how we might benefit from the um, different structures that, that might occur uh, that we might uh, choose to look at. Uh, with that, uh, with, with that uh, organization. I'm sorry, I, I did not write this out. I, I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I think I'm going to need a, a little bit more succinct motion yeah. there. I'm looking at uh, Miss Weeks. Do you have anything written down at this point, based on what was just heard? No, not really. Okay, so, okay. Uh, Mr. Manson, if. if I'm sorry. Yeah, your worship. yeah, go ahead, Mr. Manson. Can you shed some light on this, please? If, if I may, Your Worship, I can probably ad lib something if somebody's uh, writing it down, which I'm sure Amanda will. Um, the other thing to consider is um, there's two ways to doing it. One is uh, to direct staff um, to review options for um, additional or alternative operating uh, methods for the Parksville Community and Conference Center um, with uh, options for uh, Council's review and consideration, uh, something along that line. Um, the other thing, though, is uh, perhaps you may want to um, have a Council or a Mayor's Task Force look at it. A lot of the things that you're talking about are, uh, it's very community-oriented. Um, yes, our subsidy is going up, 
And, yes, the cost of using the thing are going up because the community and conference center society is very aware of council's concerns with the increasing subsidy. So they're looking at ways and means to increase the revenue, one of which is increasing the rates. And as you increase the rates, people will not use it. If you want people to use it, you decrease the rates. But if you decrease the rates, you're going to have to increase the subsidy. Either that or operate it on a, I don't know, a six-day-a-week basis or a five-day-a-week or a four-day-a-week. Those are all something that, to me, is more in the realm of subjectivity and community or the community's wish for such a facility to be available to them. We can look at it from the staff perspective, more from the objective side of it. The subjective side of it, I think, though, would be more in the realm of some sort of community task force. What does the community want out of that building? If it was privatized, you're talking about people using it and being driven out of using it because of the rates. If it was privatized, I think that would likely be worse because there would be no subsidy at that point. Those are things that I think councils should consider with regards to this. And it could be kind of a two-phase thing, part of a council task force, and then based on the council's task force finding, then send it to staff, ways and means to accomplish the directions from the task force, or you could even do the both of them in parallel. Those are just some considerations for a council. Okay, let me put the heat back on Ms. Weeks. Did you write down the initial part of that suggestion? And if you wouldn't mind reading it back, and then I'll look to you, Councillor Neufeld, to see if that's something that is something you can support, and then I'll go to other members. It would basically be that staff be directed to review options for alternative operating methods for the Parksville Community and Conference Center with options and a recommendation for council's consideration. Is that something that captures your initial intent? Yes, thank you very much, Your Worship. You wish to make that as a recommendation? I would make that a motion, please. All right, so moved as a recommendation. We have a seconder in Councillor Greer. So on that particular recommendation, is there any discussion from council? Okay, I see a number of hands up. Councillor Morrison has been patient. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What I was going to suggest was that it might be something to refer to the Council Advisory Committee rather than go through this at this point, just to get some further ideas rather than go through the motion to send it to staff first. That's an interesting suggestion, actually. That might be a topic quite appropriate for that advisory body. So at this point, with this standing, if you wish to make a motion to refer this to that body, you can certainly do so. Yeah, I would make that a motion to refer it. Okay, very good. Point of order, Your Worship. Yes, Councillor Paldese. Don't we already have a motion on the floor? That is correct. So technically, though, that can be referred to another body, can it not, Mr. Manson, our now stand-in parliamentarian? If I may, Your Worship, what I would suggest is one of two things. Either let the first motion go forward, whether it's approved or defeated. The other thing would be to table that motion until such time as you get some information back from the Council Committee would be another way of doing it. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. If that is the case, I'm going to have to not accept your motion to refer because that may be technically inappropriate. And we will go back to the recommendation that's now on the floor for discussion. And then however that falls out, there could be another recommendation that comes forward to move that into that realm that you're discussing, I believe. Mr. Manson? Okay, very good. So on that recommendation, this is the original recommendation to do an analysis. I think Councillor Paul Davidson was next, and then we'll go around the room. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm not going to support the motion to send it back to staff. I do support the ‑‑ I will wait until we have the next motion to send it to the advisory group. I think, you know, we need some more information. We have a lot of work going to staff right now, and 
there are things that they need to be focused on. I know we've had this discussion many times before. Yes, the subsidy is very high, but you know what? That center is busy. I think what we need to do is identify some goals. What are we trying to accomplish here? Are we trying to get rid of the subsidy, lower the subsidy? Are we trying to increase uh, community involvement? Are we trying to, uh, you know, dump another service off that is that council or that the city does? I mean, we need to sort of figure out what it is we're trying to accomplish with this discussion because we've had it so many times. We, we know that by having a board and a non, I believe, non-profit society over there and having itself run with a subsidy which relative to us running that organization by, um, from the city's level it is quite low. I know the subsidy itself is high, but if we were to take that over and run it, I'm pretty sure we're talking about three, four times that amount at least. And, uh, you know, we need to be real clear what we're trying to accomplish here. So I'm definitely not supporting the motion that's on there right now. I'll wait for the next one to come around. All right. Thank you, Councillor Paul Davidson. Go ahead, Councillor Lafayette. Thank you, Worship. In the past, when we've discussed the, um, the conference center, one of the things that Council has to remember is that there are fixed costs for owning and operating that building. And those fixed costs are probably slightly higher than 50% of that 236000 I think the operation of the building is probably somewhere around $140,000, memory serves me correctly. When I was uh, council liaison to the, uh, to the uh, conference center, I had strongly suggested that, that they identify what the cost of operating and maintaining the building is. And that's, that's fixed. You can't, you can't do anything about that. Whoever has it, whoever takes it over, those are costs you have to pay. You've got, you've got your, um, your, your heat, your power, your light, your cleaning, and everything else that goes with it. And um, I think the bigger picture, which is another reason why I won't support the motion, I think the bigger picture here is that what's the value to the community? And uh, I, don't think there is, I don't think there is a cost to that. But you're not going to get away from the fixed cost of owning and operating and maintaining the building. That's, that costs a lot of money. All right. Other members of council? Councillor Powell? Thank you, Your Worship. As the liaison to the PCCC, I've been able to attend one meeting, and it's my understanding that they are using every uh, tool at their uh, touch to try and raise money. If you're renting that hall and you require their dish dishes or that you require any of their stuff, there's a charge to it, plus the charge of renting the room. I agree with both uh, Councillor Powell Davidson and Councillor Lefebvre. I think we're getting a pretty good deal for our dollars. Seems to me we raised at $20,000 for maintenance at one point because they weren't keeping up with the maintenance. And I think that that, uh, that space is efficiently run. Well, I've only been to one meeting. Uh, and I do have some questions that I will be bringing up as a representative to council. And uh, no, I don't think we can get a better deal on this, quite frankly. So I won't be supporting it. Okay, Councillor Greer. Thank you, Your Worship. I agree, too, with the two councillors that have just spoken. I think maybe the first step, rather than send it back to the staff, would be to go to the advisory board. So, I, I, you know, I'd be prepared to move the seconder of that motion from councillor um, and, and just go with the advisory board for a starter. All right. Thank you, Councillor Greer. Uh, I'm going to call the vote. Councillor Newfeld, because I think we've all had opportunity, and uh, there may be other questions that you have as well. So, uh, all those in favor of the recommendation as presented? All those opposed? All right, so that is defeated. Uh, we're back to where we were before. Is there a member of council that wishes to make a motion at this time, a recommendation, if you will, to um, have our Citizens Advisory Committee look at this greater topic? Councillor Morrison. I'll make that motion. All right, so I see a motion from Councillor Morrison. It's been seconded by Councillor Paul Davidson on Councillor Morrison's recommendation. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? And that is carried. All right, very good. Councillor Neufeld, do you have any other outstanding questions at this time? Thank you very much, Your Worship. The... Um The case of, of noxious weeds, and, and we seem to be uh, in, in a position that we have a, a fair amount of, of noxious weed in the, uh, in the area. 
uh, have we considered um, uh, using uh, a contracted service such as the um, uh, goats on the hoof that uh, have come out? Um, you know, I start to look at, at uh, using services uh, and, and decreasing the, uh, the amount of manpower that we require as far as the uh, city is concerned. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at, I guess, the beggar's checklist that uh, came out. Um, are there different ways of, of looking at uh, how we provide services to our, our um, taxpayer? And, and I just, this is one that sort of uh, sprang out at me, given uh, what we've just seen as far as the, uh, um, the presentation that was made as far as uh, goats on the hoof and, and uh, the um, um, uh, council decision to, in fact, uh, enact uh, a bylaw that would allow for this to occur. Uh, could we not take a, a forefront position and, and uh, go, go and uh, use their facility? Um, it's it's uh, just something that uh, I, 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 it, it sort of sprang out at me, and I thought, oh, okay, let's, let's see what uh, the possibility as far as use is concerned. And, and it's that that um, uh, really is, is the discussion around many points like that that uh, I would like to have. Um, Okay, Councillor Newfeld. So, if I understand correctly, then um, just for the background, we have, by virtue of our final adoption on Monday night, now made available the potential of utilizing um, goats within city limits uh, in the capacity of a private business providing for a land clearing, noxious weed clearing. I'll ask you, uh, Mr. Metcalf, if you could give us a quick sense of how the city currently manages um, issues around noxious weeds, perhaps broom as well. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, the, the spending package that was identified was to get uh, council direction if this e indeed is an area that we want to go into is the control. Uh, it is legislated, so um, it is a staff recommendation that we do move forward with it. In terms of the uses of, um, in terms of the use of goats, um, I, I, it's something we could look at. We haven't actually determined the method with which we'd do it. First of all, we wanted to get the direction. Um, and then we'd, we'd determine the method. One of the one of the issues that I uh, heard on uh, the other the other night was that uh, the goats don't discriminate between what they eat. Um, so I'm not sure how that would work, but it is something we could most certainly look at. Okay, I don't know if we need a recommendation for that. The problem is we don't have a clear understanding yet because it's such an early stage of what costs would be associated with that, how effective that could be. But I heard within your context of your question, I think you're leading to a bigger question, which is um, related to contracting out services versus utilizing staff resources. Um, that, of course, is addressed in part through our labor negotiations and our collective agreement with staff. It's not unprecedented that our staff have worked with uh, even volunteers side by side. Two examples would be Nichols Park as well as the trail, uh, sorry, railway garden. Uh, this just come to mind right away. Um, I think um, any further analysis around what is uh, ultimately the more effective way forward in terms of that balance between contracting, because we also contract out many of our services as well as um, utilizing in-house resources, is a much broader question. And I think that's something that we are on a, in a process of reevaluating on an ongoing basis. I know that staff um, ultimately always look to that as a uh, a question, but go ahead, Mr. Manson, if you want to elaborate on that. Uh, yes, Your Worship. With regards to that, I wanted to also um, caution Council within the collective agreement that we have right now. Um, we're actually in negotiations for the next agreement. Uh, there currently is a clause uh, for contracting out. Um, essentially, uh, within the agreement right now, we can do whatever we want as long as we don't lay anybody off. So if it's a means of contracting out a service that would result in staff cuts, uh, that would be contrary to the collective agreement. Um, council could direct me uh, through these negotiations to try and get that clause removed. Um, that would be a very, a very tough sell. No not, question. Not that I wouldn't like to do it, but it would be a very, very tough sell. Right. Okay. But as you stated, uh, we have already put in place um, hiring freezes, so we're not adding any new positions. Uh, we've focused our staff primarily on our core services. 
Uh, and um, if I understand you correctly, there is some latitude there down in issues over and above that core service, as long as it does not result in a reduction, a further reduction of staff beyond attrition, because we have also indicated that we have an attrition-based policy when, when staff ultimately retire normally and or leave the, the organization, that um, it is entirely within the realm of our administration to assess um, contracting versus uh, hiring additional staff, for instance, to undertake whatever works are required. I'm just looking at Councillor Newfeld if that is a sufficient answer for the time being because, you know, we, we can focus on noxious weeds, but that's really a tiny element in a much okay. bigger question. And, and I accept it as, as being that, uh, Your Worship, and, and uh, but I, I, this just sort of brought out a number of things. Um, All right, so let me just, uh, I do see other hands up in the air, so and then uh, I, I want to move this on a little bit. Okay, uh, go ahead, Councillor Paul Davids. Thank you, Worship. I just want to clarify because it was brought up Monday night and it's brought up again today. The, uh, when the goats on the hoof people presented to us, the idea was not just open up the barn door and let the goats go all over Parksville and eat everything in sight. They're, they're contained within electrical fences, so you only put them where you want stuff gone. You don't let them go into everybody's garden as seems to be the uh, uh, confusion running around this table. And, uh, and it is a tiny element, so let's not spend too much time on it, but it's a specialized service for specialized circumstances. Uh, Councillor Greer. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I just have a couple of questions, and uh, they came from the preliminary budget, and it was the software maintenance and operation 40,000. What is the total software budget? Did we, have, did we have that? We haven't covered that, I know. How much has this increased over the last five years? Well, I do know that within that time frame, we have made some uh, significant um, budgetary items around information systems as we continue to uh, rebuild our information systems and build on our information technology, including several hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, acquisition. I'm looking to, I guess, our Director of Finance, uh, if you can provide us with a little bit of an update for Councillor Greer. Um, I, I would actually I'd need to go back and review my uh, review the records to know what the increase is over the last five years. We only have uh, back to 2012 in this package right here, so I couldn't uh, tell you what the total increase is over the last five years in that budget area. I, I've been given some information that, and it depends, of course, on, on the volume of what we have, that it, here again, most corporations and cities now are, sub, are uh, jobbing this information out are contracting it out, and I'm just wondering whether we're at that stage or whether we even do contract Go ahead, some Mr. Of Manson, and I, I do believe we are contracting with um, providers of that software. Go ahead, Mr. Manson. If I may, Your Worship, directly to that most recent uh, uh, comment, that's exactly what we do, is we don't have the capacity or the knowledge to do any uh, programming, whatever. Uh, the software that we have right now is from third-party vendors. Uh, to keep that software current, up to date, uh, with whatever regulatory or other changes are required, their software maintenance. Uh, for instance, payroll systems, uh, the deductions that occur from Revenue Canada taxation every year have to be upgraded for the new deduction rates. Uh, that's done through uh, uh, software maintenance contracts. Um, as enhancements are made to programs, um, um, just to make them run better, if you stop getting those enhancements and something happens and you're not part of their uh, software maintenance licensing agreement, um, you're basically stuck out there on a limb with a program that's no longer running uh, that you need for your day-to-day -day operations. So directly to your question, um, that's exactly what we are doing. The software that we have right now is... Um, third-party uh, vendor software, uh, which we're using. Um, this 40,000 is, is uh, more along the lines of contingency to allow us uh, to deal with um, extraneous software type things that may come up from year to year. Uh, right now, we have nothing in the budget if an extraordinary um, uh, item were to occur in the software world that re 
would require us to address. That's exactly what this is, the 40,000 that you're talking about. And it's organization-wide. It's not giving, I don't know, a $20,000 contingency to engineering, a $20,000 contingency to finance, another one to administration, another one to planning, and another one to the fire department to deal with their individual software requirements. This is kind of an organizational-wide software contingency for whatever occurs during the year. Vendors, as we all know, are here as long as they have a product. If something were to happen that one of the software suites that we're using right now, if the vendor was to go out of business and we couldn't support it anymore, we would have to do something to keep it going. And this would provide us a bit of a contingency for exactly that. Thank you, Mr. Manson. That was quite an answer. But I appreciate the fact, and I now understand what we're doing. That's good. One other question, and I'm no computer techie, but I've been asked whether we use the cloud computer storage for our information. Do we use that? If I may, Your Worship, no, we don't. And the reason why, within legislation, the information that we have, we have to ensure that it stays within Canada. If you're using the cloud, you have no idea where your data is being stored. It could be basically anywhere in the world. We have legislative requirements that actually requires us to ensure that the data we have stays in Canada. And understandably so, yeah. So the short answer is the cloud does not provide an effective mechanism for us to store any quality of data. Right. Well, that's good to hear. One other question while I have you online here. Thank you very much. Is the 16,000, the co-op student that we had in the preliminary budget, is it involved in this budget as well to put the computer software or from cards onto software? This is a data entry position, I believe. Is that correct, Mrs. Lovegrove, to your recollection? It's for the engineering department in order to, yes, to update all their records. Yeah. It is linked with the service connection software as a spending package. And if the service connection software is not approved as a spending package, then there would be no need for the co-op student is my recollection. All right. Thank you for that. Thank you. And maybe I asked this question earlier and you put me off until now, so I better answer it now. Yes, you've had no opportunity to ask questions so far this afternoon. Go ahead, Counselor. The provincial grants that went from 463,000 in 2011 down to 241. So that's quite a difference. And I think Mr. Manson was going to answer that since I got the numbers from him. Did you want to further elaborate on the continued reduction of our grants, please? If I may, Your Worship, I think actually the Director of Finance can answer it better than I do. One of the things with regards to that is the provincial government, in their infinite wisdom, a number of years was advancing a previous year or a future year's grant into a current year. Eventually that's going to catch up to us so that when the future year comes around and you've got the grant in the year before, the grant in the current year is going to be lower. I think that's the answer, but I'll defer it fully to the Director of Finance. All right, Mr. Butterworth, if you could further elaborate, please. Yeah, that's correct. The provincial government seems to be using this grant as a way to balance, part of a way to balance their budget by what they provide to the communities. And when they have surplus monies, they try and advance it to us quicker and give us more, and then they pull it back in the next year or the next two years. And that's what they've done. In 2010, actually, we only got $94,000 for that grant, whereas the year before we got $593,000. So it's jumping up and down like a yo-yo, and it really makes it a little bit difficult for us to keep our budgets in line when that amount keeps going up and down, and it's a fairly big number in our budgets. But for 2015, I anticipate it will go back up to the average again, which is in the $307,000, so it will jump back up again. That's my anticipation. It's just 2013 and 2014 it was actually reduced, and it should go back up again. Great, thank you. All right, very good. All right, Councillor Lefebvre. 
Thank you, Worship. And while we're still talking about uh, high tech, Microsoft announced the other day that they're no longer going to be servicing uh, X XP. Are we, are we impacted by that at all? Thank God. Okay, thank you. That's no, good. you're not. Many, many people around the globe are, but nonetheless, you're not. Further questions from members of council? If not, I would like a motion to receive Ms. Lovegrove's report. Moved by Councillor Morrison, seconded by Councillor Powell Davidson. Further discussion on the motion to receive the report? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you again, Ms. Lovegrove, for that. Uh, do we have a date set yet for a subsequent budget meeting? Not yet? Okay, so we'll work on that. And um, for members of council, um, especially those that like to get into the detail, um, use the time between now and that meeting to work with staff on any additional questions you may have. If you wish to bring motions or recommendations forward, you'll have that opportunity at a later time. And um, honestly, I think uh, our financial house continues to be in very good order. I'm very pleased to see uh, the five-year plan and what it looks like at this stage at least. And uh, I look forward to further discussions at a later time. Can we get a motion to adjourn? Moved by Councillor Paul Davidson, seconded by Councillor Lefebvre. All in favor? Opposed? Carried? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.